Hey guys, what's going on? It's Asher coming at you today in Raid Shadow Legends. Welcome to the video, guys. Glad to see you, even though I can't see you, but you can see me, and I guess that's all that matters here for the intents and purposes of a YouTube video. Hopefully you guys are all doing well. It's been a while. It's been over a year since we've done a video like this. I thought we'd revisit because a lot of new champions are going to make the list. A lot of new champions have been added to the game since the last time that we made a top five champions for each of the traditional dungeons in the game. That's right, Ice Golem's Peak, Spider's Den, Dragon's Lair, and Fire Knight's Castle. Let me throw the question to you guys. Where do you spend the most time farming? Me, lately, I've been just kind of going with whatever tournament or event is going on, and that's basically it. Just kind of alternating so I get those bonus rewards. But I would say overall, obviously Spider's Den, just get silver, is my most farmed dungeon by far. But second to that, I think Fire Knight's Castle. I just love the gear in Fire Knight, especially that Savage gear, looking to upgrade. And, you know, who has enough Savage gear to fit all the champions they need to put it on? At least that's a problem that I run into. Anyway, all uh, of these dungeons, all of the traditional OG dungeons, are worth farming, right? So they're all solid. Let's start with Dragon's Lair. We're going to keep it to just Epic Champions. If you want to see a follow-up video on, you know, Doom Tower uh, bosses or on uh, Legendary Champions, Rare Champions, even on Common Champions... Let me know in the comments below. I'll make that happen for you guys. So Dragon Slayer, Accuracy, Speed, Lifesteal, I mean, Stalwart Gear. There's a lot of good sets in Dragon Slayer. And Dragon Slayer for me is all about Poisoners, right? So let's go ahead and give a shout out to some of my faves here. The top five uh, uh, epics, excuse me, for Dragon Slayer is Urugrim, starting out at number one. I mean, there's really no ranking here. It depends on what you need. But Urugrim, in my mind, in my heart, is number one. There's one thing I've learned in all my years. Sometimes you gotta say, what the f***? man this guy is a god he's a beast he's a legendary he really is a legendary that's not stupid youtube clickbait that's real life he's got three hits on his a1 each with a really decent 45 percent chance of placing a poison add sniper that's a 50 50 shot on every single one of these three hits by the way i have a uh, construction going on outside so if you hear a little background noise my sincere apologies usually whenever i say that nobody can hear anything and i'm just wasting my breath i have a heal and a, and a debuff removal cool that's good for all the poisons and decreased attack that the dragon's placing on us. And then we have three more poisons and two continuous heals on the A3. Thank you very much, Urogrim. You are a god. Uh, next up is going to be kind of an old school champion here in Taurus. Taurus has his A3 Toxic Nova, which really is, well, Toxic Nova. We're placing four poisons. Uh, he's, he's sacrificing 99% of his HP in order to do so. However, he does have unkillable for two turns, so you have some time to heal him back up. But yeah, like I said, all about poisons, and you can't get much better than four poisons on just one turn in one ability from Taurus. So yeah, very, very good option for Dragon's Lair in Taurus. Uh, next up is going to be another new champion here. I have a couple new champions on the list for Dragon's Lair, and it's going to be the Frogman, Taragi the Frog. I feel like he's flown a little bit under the radar in Raid Shadow Legends. What about you guys? Am I wrong are people giving the frogman enough love out there i wonder why uh, but he has decreased attack on his A1. On his A2, he has AoE Provoke, which is helpful for the waves. On the A3, we got Shield, Ally Protect as well. Shield is on all allies. He also heals himself, heals more for each poison. And then on his passive, when attacked, has a coin flip of placing a big version of poison on the attacker for two turns. Occurs once per hit. So with all those AoE attacks on the dragon, he's going to be laying more and more poisons and supporting your team with his Shield and Ally Protect as he does so. So Taragi the frog i feel like he's a really really solid champion out there before i go on to the support champion let me cover the last poisoner here another new champion it's venomage venomage i think is a is a female you guys told me on the last video oh she it is a she right Man, you guys, all of the comments are going to be like playing the gender game with me. Uh, don't get me into it. Don't get me into it. We have the poison activation on the A1, which I love to see, man, off of an epic champion, no less, right? By the way, shout out to Dark Kale or Dark KL, as Plarium calls him. I hate myself. Oh, I hate myself. That's messed up, man. That's messed up, Plarium. 
Uh, 45, sorry, I'm flustered by Dark Kale. 50% chance of activating up to two poison debuffs on each target. That's gonna be cycling our poisons against the dragon, doing a lot more damage. I love Venomage. Similar to a lot of these champions, uh, Taragi the Frog as well, uh, and Urgrim as well. Good kind of, champions who are good against Dragon, uh, Dragon's Lair, tend to be good against Clan Boss as well. That is certainly the case here with Venomage. On the A2, we have decreased defense, decreased attack if they're under poison, which yes, uh, the dragon will be, so a good debuffer for the dragon as well and we got more poisons here on the a3 three turn cooldown two more big versions of poison we also uh, receive a less damage from enemies under heal reduction that's cool too right and then the last champion number five here is going to be a support a non-poison i forget we throw one non-poisoner in the list here and it's going to be doom priest right doom priest is a great support champion for dragon's lair because she's healing every turn and she's also removing those decreased attacks removing those poisons uh from your team so doom priest very very handy one of my favorite support champions in the game overall certainly against dragon's lair now a brief intermission before we go into ice golem here guys is seer really could be and is on all of these lists i just didn't want to take up a spot with seer on every one of these dungeons excluding spiders uh spider's den right because honestly seer is amazing right because of this karma burn ability she's able to absolutely decimate evaporate anything in her tracks it's one of my favorite abilities to just see like on the screen and watch in action right so seer is on all of these lists i'm not going to include her on every single one so seer we love you all right going into ice golem ice golem actually has some solid gear is probably my least farmed dungeon out of the four and that's not to say it's useless though right ice golem has life offense defense crit rate resistance retaliation reflex cursed and taunting i'm not a huge fan of but all of those sets can have use to a lot of players out there so Ice Golem, we're looking for support, right? We love support champions for Ice Golem. And uh, let's start out by giving a big call out to Caden. I'm a big fan of Caden for Ice Golem teams. Not only does he have a uh, decrease attack on an AoE on his A2, defense base, easy to keep him alive, but also he has a really good revival ability. Revives two random allies, 50% HP, and increased defense on them. Really nice to have the increased defense buff on them to keep them alive longer than just, you know, enough to get one more AoE hit on them by the Ice Golem. We've all been there. The team wipes. You have your reviver, they, they, they lift them back up, they're revived, and then boom, the whole team's dead again because the Ice Golem hits so hard and so often because of those HP thresholds that he auto attacks on. So I love Caden as a great support champion with the decreased attack on the AoE as well for the minions uh, as well. So big, big fan of Caden. Next up, we're gonna go ahead and stay here for Silar. Big fan of Silar for Ice Golem. You can use Silar in a stun set, stunning the minions of the Ice Golem and stunning the waves to help you get to the Ice Golem. I love Silar in stun set because AoE on the A1, AoE with decreased accuracy on the A2, and decreased speed, which works against the Ice Golem himself, and turn meter, which also works against the Ice Golem. So a lot of turn meter manipulation and a lot of crowd control from Silar. Big, big fan. You don't even need to use her for damage. Use her for control. Control the pace of the battle which is very effective against ice golem so we're talking a lot about uh you know support champions here for ice golem i gotta give a shout out to mausoleum mage mausoleum mage champion number three on my ice golem list guys this guy is just really really good right he does a ton he has decreased speed which a lot of people forget about on his a1 on the a2 we get increased crit rate increased defense and block debuffs on a three turn cooldown. Thank you very much, Mausoleum Mage. And then Winds of Purging removes all debuffs and heals them as well. So we get a cleanse with a, a, a heal that can be even bigger depending on the debuffs removed from Mausoleum Mage. He's also pretty fast. He has a, a lot of HP. He's just a very, very, very good support champion. One of the best in the epic category overall. Next up is going to be, we'll talk about support champions here. Let's go to one of the new ones. I am another huge fan of Ursula the Mourner for Ice Golem, right? Because, you know, I mean, we could sit here and talk about all the champions that are tremendous. Oh, hell no. I'm gonna give it a, a two-way tie here because there's so many support champions that are tremendous for Ice Golem. Ursula Mourner, I love her because increase attack, decrease attack, that's great. She has this revival though. 
This is clutch for Ice Golem, especially if her team is wiping. Some of the best teams in the world for Ice Golem are gonna wipe a lot again because of those heavy hitting auto attacks. The reason I didn't include like Royal Guard on this list, who is A, because he'll be on the spider list, spoiler, and B, because He's great, but really for me, Ice Golem isn't about getting, you know, a ton of damage every single hit because you're then you're going to need a, a really strong supporting cast of champions to revive them and keep them healed because, again, I'm going to stop saying it, all of that damage is constantly coming down. So Requiem is just one of the best revivals inside the entire game. Really nice to have Ursula on your team. You build her very, very robust in terms of a lot of HP and defense, and then she's the last woman standing in the worst case scenario. And and then boom, she revives everybody with increased defense and strengthen and 75% HP. That is tremendous. I mean, compare that to Caden's ability. Uh, it, well, it's not even fair to do so because she's one of the best in the game. Uh, a two-way tie here, AKA, I'm just gonna give you an extra champion basically, right? I have to give love to my girl who I have a video coming out uh, uh, two days, I think. Dark Elhane. I mean, she was born. <laughs> Was she really born? Don't even go down this road because I'm not talking about it. I guess enter pixels were entered into the game. She was coded. Oh, bro, who got you crying like that? She was coded to fight the ice golem, right? And torment because of this ability. Uh, she will, uh, every anytime she's frozen, she'll remove that crap and put increased crit damage, crit rate, and strengthen on herself. And then she'll auto attack with this hard hitting A2. You can use her as your only damage dealer for Ice Golem because anytime an ally is frozen, boom, she instantly activates her A2 hard hitting uh, Death's Majesty ability. And then I said there was a two way tie. Uh, it, whatever. Again, I'm just going to give you an extra champion because I have to give love to Miscreate Monster as well. He's one of the best support champions for Ice Golem because this shield that he has on his A2 is based on the damage that he puts out. So we're getting extra damage off of the two minions of the Ice Golem, and it's really, really handy to have that shield on a three-turn cooldown for all of those uh, heavy, hard-hitting AoE attacks from the Ice Golem. So Miscreate a Monster as well. So we'll pretend that I gave you uh, five champions there, not six. Fire Knight, man. Like I told you guys, Fire Knight is where I spend the majority of my time inside the game I love Fire Knight. I think he's a cool boss, interesting and unique mechanics. We don't really talk about the OG dungeon bosses because, well, they're old, right? I mean, they're, they're old news. But Fire Knight, just the way that he works, you know, the mechanics of the boss, I think is really, really fun. And I love farming immunity gear, shield gear, crit damage gear, stun, regeneration, and savage, especially regen and savage lately. A little bit of crit damage too. And then even in progression, you know, immunity, shield gear, I love the artifacts in Fire Knight's castle. Let's start out with the best champion, arguably inside the entire game, legendaries included. I guess Coldheart would be on the on the rare side, but certainly on the epic side, there's nobody better than Allure because of the A1. You can even shut off the A2 and the A3 if you don't need it for the waves. And boom, three times that random decreases the target's turn meter by 25% on each critical hit. You can even use her on bad affinity matchups and still go in and have enough turn meter manipulation to where that shield is not coming back uh, you know, in place of the Fire Knight. So she's just incredible for turn meter control. Now, you know what, guys? I would also give uh, Royal Guard an honorable mention here. If you find this recording, don't feel bad about this. Part of the journey is the end. Because he is on technically the fastest speed run team uh, inside all of uh, Fire Knight for stage 25. However, again, I didn't want to include him on all these lists, so honorable mention, Royal Guard, you're a great, a great, great uh, champion overall. Uh, but I want to give love to uh, a debuffer here. We haven't really mentioned any in this video, have we? Not AoE, at least. Stag Knight, man. I'm going to give it to Stag Knight here for Fire Knight. I use him on my main team. He has a two-time hitter with decreased speed, which can be applied to the Fire Knight on this A1. And then again, decreased defense, decreased attack on an AoE here. He is uh, a Spirit Affinity, so good against the Force Affinity Fire Knight level as well. I'm um, just a huge fan of Stag Knight and he's so fast and what I like to do is run Stag Knight in a shield set because he has a lot of HP 21k HP if you need it if you need it for progression. So Stag Knight absolute class act uh, love that guy man. He's my favorite debuffer in the game in terms of decreased defense option for you guys. Deke! Deacon Armstrong very very good also for Fire Knight. He has a two time hitter with Leech on his A1 he's an AoE decreased defense on his A2 and then he has time compression 
action. Again, turn meter is so pivotal, so crucial, so important to uh, beating the Fire Knight, right? So fills the turn meter of all allies, 15% decreases turn meter of all enemies, 15%. Nice to when you have the shield down. Nice even when you don't have the shield down for the turn meter increase uh, of your allies and to grant you an extra turn. And then he has, can go right back into his AoE on his A2. He has speed in all battles as well, so a good aura lead if you're looking for a speed aura lead. Next up is going to be the Fat Man. Fokker and the Fat Man. Fokker and the Fat Man. He is a, uh, a really solid ally attack champion, and he's good against the Fire Knight as well. Another spirit affinity champion here. Uh, he does have the ally attack, which is a good strategy to chip away at that shield, get the shield removed, and then just really lay into him with the turn meter and uh, the damage, obviously. So he has HP burn, poison. He also has a decreased defense on his A1, and then that ally attack with increased crit rate, increased crit damage on all allies. Very, very solid champion, especially for the Fire Knight. All honorable mention to all the counter attack champions. I guess there's only one Skull Crusher uh, in the epic category because again uh having that counterattack another viable strategy to get that shield down so let's give the final spot to another kind of recent addition here and it is vogoth if you're struggling against the uh, the Fire Knight, Vogoth is a great option, guys. The reason I put him in my top five. He has a three-time hitter, good for the shield, right on his A1. Uh, each hit has a 30%, make it 40, of, to, er, the the bit of increasing the duration of one random buff on the target by one turn. Uh, solid, especially for those decreased speed and, you know, any other debuff, because obviously you can't land those debuffs when he does have his shield up. On the A2, uh, a Provoke, decreased attack as well. Uh, good for the waves, right? But then he has, whenever the champion is attacked, heals all allies by 50% of the damage received. So maybe you're running into one of those situations against the Fire Knight where, you know, you can't get the shield down all the time, right? You can lean on a champion like Vogoth to at least keep your team nice and healthy and nice and healed while still chipping away with a three-time hitter on his A1 to help get that shield down as well. So I'm a big fan of Vogoth as a support champion for Fire Knight for that reason. So there you go, guys. Allure, uh, Royal Guard, shout out, Deacon Armstrong, Stag Knight, Fucker in the fat. and Vogoth are my top five for Fire Knight. Let's move on to Spider's Den, where I do all of my silver farming inside the game. Spider, man, spider. Uh, with Spider, guys, this is, a, this is the toughest of the four because there's so many good HP burn champions in the game, and it's all about HP burn after you go past stage 20. And, you know, I'm, I'm trying to include champions of all affinities on today's list because I don't know. There's three stages that you guys might be working on if you progress to enough to get kind of towards the end game of the of raid right stage 20 you know it, it's pretty efficient energy wise and it's a lot faster because you can use enemy max hp champions like royal guard like husk champions like that right but then stage 24 is the most efficient for your energy uh and then i farm stage 25 because i'm you know i'm looking at two resources energy in time right and if i just want the best artifacts that i can possibly you know have a chance at landing i don't mind paying a little bit of a premium on my energy loss there but again, that's, you know, I'm a dirty pay to win player. So that that's, you know, that's my choice. You guys make the best choice for you as well. So it's hard because there's, you know, we're contending against two different affinities for all these bosses. Just take that into consideration. So Spider's Den, obviously, for all your accessory farming and, uh, you know, a lot of uh, a lot of good silver there, as I mentioned, like three times now. So let's talk about my favorite HP burn layers in the game. I guess we got to start out by talking about uh, what is he a sacred order champion? Mordecai? Mordecai, where are you? There you are. Mordecai, man, a recent addition to the game. This guy is insane, man. I mean, he has the decreasing turn meter and fill the turn meter of allies, which is helpful. Uh, obviously, the spider is susceptible to turn meter loss. And we have an HP burn on all enemies for two turns and increase attack on all allies. Something about these HP burns coming from Mordecai, man. It's, it's, it's just absolutely insane. He attacks one enemy, has a, what, 45% chance of decreasing the target's turn meter by 10%. Instead, it gets all the way bumped up to 75 if they're under HP burn. So nice turn meter control on the A1 and the A2. Mordecai is just like an absolute cheat code when it comes to HP burns on especially Spider 25, right? Uh, also, one of the Doom Tower champions, and I believe he is Demon Spawn. 
Akoth the Seared. Akoth the Seared. I did a guide on him. Spider 24 is, you know, he is the best HP burner that I've come across for Spider 24, being Magic Affinity, guys. Very, very reliable HP burn on the A2 here. Attacks all enemies, has a 20% chance of placing HP burn debuff for two turns. The chance of placing the debuff increases by 20% for each enemy alive. This dude was made for Spider's Den because of all the Spiderlings, increasing that chance up to hopefully 100%. He also has an AoE attack, uh, has a 50 make it 75% chance of increasing the cooldown of all skill, or uh, excuse me, increasing the cooldown of all skills by two turns on enemies under HP burn. Also plays a shield buff equal to 20% of the champion's max HP on all allies. So he's got a little bit of miscreated monster there with the shield. And of course, he has a lot of damage vis-a-vis -vis his HP burn. Has a 25% chance of placing a fear debuff on an enemy for one turn whenever they receive damage from an HP burn debuff placed on themselves. So he also has crowd control. He is the second Doom Tower normal uh, champion that you can unlock from normal secret rooms. Uh, highly advise you guys look into him again for the uh, for the spider alone, uh, stage 24, where again, that's the most optimum for your energy to silver uh, ratio. All right, let's go ahead. We just mentioned him, but we had to include Miscreated Monster on two lists because he's that good, man. Again, that shield on the A2, and he, you know, has some support with Allied Protect as well, but the shield on the A2, he can apply decreased defense on the spider on the A1 as well. The shield does such a good job, such a tremendous job of keeping all of your allies alive against the spider. So Miscreated Monster, the... Halloween champion from two years ago, I think. Uh, just a still one of the best champions for support inside Spider's uh, Den. All right, going up against the Spider can be challenging, so it's nice to have a little bit of crowd control and just an amazing passive here. I check the Wenderin, dude. This passive is insane. He has Freeze in his kit. He'll put him on the same team as a Mordecai on Spider twenty, uh, uh, Spider twenty five, and you're looking good. You are you're golden, right? Heals allies by five percent of max HP every time an enemy under HP burn debuff gets a turn. Fills a turn meter of all allies by 10% every time an enemy under freeze debuff gets a turn. The synergy between this twisted hunger passive going off everywhere with a freezer and an HP burner on the team. I mean, think about it. We're getting insane heals and insane turn meter increase. That's all you need to know about Acheck the Wender. And this guy is, uh, uh, it is, a, is, is that a guy? You look hot with a mustache. Yeah, it's a guy. Acheck. Definitely. He was built for Spider, an incredible champion. If you haven't used him or haven't built him, highly encourage you do so if you're lucky enough to have him. So we talked about Achek. Oh, let's talk about, I got two more to give you. I'm gonna give you six again here, guys. I'm gonna give you six. Actually, yeah, yeah, Royal Guard. We have to throw Royal Guard in there at some point, right? My man Royal Guard, if you're just working on uh, level 20, you can build like multiple, you can build four or five Royal Guards to chop down that spider using the takedown ability. It does a ton of damage, really, really good. Honorable mention to Husk too. I mean, I think that Husk is always perennially underrated inside this game. A good option for you guys for another enemy max HP champion who also has stun in his kit. Uh, and then last but not least, guys, it is... How could I forget him? The Dwarf Geomancer, man. You taught you want a ton of damage? Look no further than Geomancer. On his A1, he has an AoE attack with decreased accuracy, perfect for the Spiderlings. On his A2, he has an H, or it removes all buffs from target enemy, then attacks them, steals all buffs if they're under HP burn, reduces the cooldown of the A3. A3, fully depletes target's turn meter, perfect for the spider, fills his champion's turn meter by the amount the target loses, and then HP burn, 100% when booked, and a weekend for three turns on a three turn cooldown, and we have this passive, decreases the damage all allies receive by 15% and deflects that damage onto each enemy under an HP burn debuff placed by this champion. Whenever this champion is attacked, deflects 30% of the damage instead. We've talked a lot about Geomancer. I have a whole guide on Geomancer, guys. I love this champion. One of my favorite additions right behind Irigrim, as I mentioned at the top of this video. And with that said, that includes the, that concludes, excuse me, the video today. Uh, those are my favorite 20 or 25 or so champions for each of the traditional dungeons inside Raid Shadow Legends. Who did I snub? Who did I leave off the list? And let me know. You can't just tell me Oh, Ash, you didn't mention, you know, Mistress of Hymns or whatever uh, without telling me who you would replace them with, who, you know, who I snubbed and who I included on the list who should not be there in favor of that champion who I snubbed. Guys, thank you so much for watching. And as always, take care, guys.